Um, first matter of business is approval of the previous minutes. Are there any corrections or additions? Motion to accept. All in favor? All right. We have the following correspondence this evening. A memo from the fire chief regarding Papudic. Memo from the code enforcement officer regarding Papudic. Memo from the public works director regarding Eastman Meadows. The first item of business is a con consent agenda item. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to remind the board that if we decide to have uh, a substantive discussion, then we will put this on the agenda for next time. This is Crescent Beach Retirement and Assisted Living Community Site Plan Extension. The Canyon Creek Development is requesting a one-year extension of the site plan approval granted for an elder, elder care facility composed of 55 assisted living beds and 40 elder care apartments located at 126 Scott Dyer Road. Section 19-9, Site Plan Procedures. Is there anybody that would like to discuss this further? If not, may I have a motion for our consideration? Elaine? extension of the site plan approval for the Crescent Beach Retirement and Assisted Living Community located at 126 Scott Dyer Road be approved with new expiration date of August 19, 2009, subject to the following condition, that electrical power, fire sprinkler, fire alarm, landscaping maintenance, and snow plowing be maintained at the site in order to preserve a minimum level of public safety access and protection until construction begins. Second. Second. All in favor? So moved. All right, the next item on the agenda is the um, Hannaford Field Bleachers Site Plan. Will you please introduce yourself and summarize any changes to the plans, please? My name is Tom Greer from Pickham and Greer, the engineer for the project. Uh, to give you a quick update as to where we are from last month where we discussed the plan. Uh, the plan has been submitted to DEP. I have received comments from the new engineer, uh, which is always a good sign. Uh, we've responded to those this week. Uh, it's a good sign because that means it's likely to end up on the analyst desk and a permit gets issued shortly. That's the major hurdle in getting the DEP approval, so we expect that to be available in the next uh, month or so in order to get that, that squared away as a minor amendment. Um, we have responded to the engineer's um, comments that, uh, that were available last time and have received a letter back saying that those were in general were, were addressed. Um, what we are in the process now of is the bleaches have been ordered. Uh, we'll be reviewing the shot drawings. Uh, there was a question of ADA access onto the bleaches, and as part of the shot drawing review, we'll be reviewing uh, that connection between the ramps and the, and the sidewalk that leads up to the ramp and going through that, working with Public Works on it. Uh, the overall project has remained virtually unchanged since you last saw it. There's just been a few minor details in, in the uh, engineering piece of it that uh, works out. Uh, what I have is an aerial photo that shows the existing field. This yellow stripe is the bleaches, the 1,400 uh, seat bleaches here with uh, just behind the existing school. You can see the tennis courts to the side. Um, one of the questions... You might want to put it up a little higher. So a little higher? Like, you know, sure. On the, perhaps on the board. Um, I can do that. I don't know. I can't turn it up. Thank you. They have a defective uh, way on one side. Um, the, the bleaches are here. This is the school building. One of the questions that came up at, at the last meeting was these homes here. Um, we did scale them off, and the nearest home is about 240 feet from the corner of the field. 
and about 500 feet from the bleaches itself. The, uh, the bleaches again here in yellow, uh, consistent coloring and the additional 12 spaces located over here beside the school. The school building is actually shown here in blue. And uh, again, some of the questions that came up during the engineering review were drainage related. Um, we are collecting drainage from the paved area and it's going through the oil grit separator and treating it with the oil grit separator uh, that's in place already and that has capacity in order to do that. Um, with that, uh, the project is as you saw it last time. Thank you. Um, well, we'll open a public hearing now for anybody who would like to speak about the features. If there's anybody here who would like to say something, please come forward. A rush of comments. Nobody? We'll close. Do we have any questions from the planning board? I, I do. Um, Ma Maureen, do we need to make uh, a, a condition regarding the um, number two of the OST Associates letter suggests that the consultant work with, with the Public Works Director on the um, shop drawings. Do, uh, do we need to make that a condition or is that not necessary? Well. Since the applicant is the town, the expectation is that the applicant can work with the public works director sure. of the town to make that work. So okay. I don't think you need to make it a condition. But if we want to, we do that often. Yeah. We can say the plans incorporate the comments received from the town engineer in his letter dated August 12, 2008. Which personally I think is a good idea. <laughs> I agree. So we typically do that. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, do we have a motion for the board to consider them? Well, I'll give it a shot. Um, I have a motion for the board to consider. Uh, finds a fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the school campus to construct uh, 1,400 seat bleachers and parking located at Hennaford Field behind the high school located at 345 Ocean House Road, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Two, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, it be ordered that based on the plans materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the school campus for 1,400 seat bleachers and parking at Hannaford Field located behind the high school located at 345 Ocean House Road be approved. And then I think we need to add a condition uh, with the following condition that that the um, that the t that that the applicant um, adhere to the requests of the August 12, 2008 letter from Ost Associates to um, Maureen O'Mara, the town planner. August 12. August 12th. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? All in favor? Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. New business for Puda Club site plan amendment.
evening. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent uh, Puddock Club. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, this is a completeness meeting, so I'll uh, uh, first outline the, the project and then go through uh, some of the comments that we've received from staff. Uh, the project is, uh, consists of the following components. The renovation of the existing clubhouse, um, a small building addition off the westerly side of the uh, existing clubhouse in this area here, uh, upgrade of the exterior facade of the building, upgrade of the existing parking area, installation of a new uh, eight inch water line from the building to Spirit Avenue, and new exterior site lighting. Um, I'm going to let uh, John Whipple, the architect, uh, present the uh, architectural elevations um, after my presentation of the site plan. Um, the, the major part of this, uh, the site plan, uh, consists of redesigning the existing parking lot so that it meets town standards. Um, this includes both the number of the required spaces uh, for the facility, circulation flow, and dimensional requirements for spaces, aisles, um, and the uh, radii. Uh, in accordance with the ordinance, we, uh, there is 173 parking spaces that are required. And this includes um, the calculation for golf course, uh, parking spaces, restaurant slash bar, uh, the retail facility within the clubhouse, and the number of employees. So we come to a total of 173 once you do the calculation for those different uh, uh, types of uses. Uh, and that's what we're proposing for the site plan is a total of 173 parking spaces. Uh, it should be noted, however, that a total of 125 spaces are required for the normal operation of the Paputa Club golf course, uh, golf facility, uh, exclusive of the ballroom facility. Uh, another component of the site plan is the replacement of the existing uh, domestic water line, which runs from the clubhouse out to Springwick Avenue, and the installation of a new eight inch water line uh, to accommodate the sprinkler system, the new sprinkler system, and a new fire hydrant located here. Uh, site lighting, we have two pole mounted light fixtures within the pipe the parking lot, and we have a number of wall mounted fixtures um, around the clubhouse. And then finally, uh, landscaping. On sheet three of your package you'll notice a planting plan and we've got a number of uh, new plants uh, primarily in front of the, the clubhouse. With re regards to uh, completeness uh, <coughs> in section 10 of our booklet uh, you'll notice a number of waivers that we have requested, uh, both permanent waivers and partial waivers. Um, item one, lot line dimensions under permanent waivers, um, and items one through four under partial waivers are primarily due to uh, the fact that we're dealing with a small portion of the overall 188 acre uh, parcel, and um, we have addressed uh, the items such as lot lines, building setbacks, location of uh, buildings and structures, existing physical features and topography within this area, within this immediate area, uh, but obviously not throughout the 188 acres. Um, item two under permanent waivers is stormwater calculations. We have asked for a waiver on that, and Steve Hodden uh, has concurred. Um, 
the current stormwater runoff uh, basically is all sheet flow uh, flowing off the parking lot, primarily in this direction, uh, onto the golf course, and ultimately flows into an existing pond in this location here on the 18th fairway. We have received, uh, as I mentioned, we've received comments both from Maureen and Steve uh, which have been addressed and, and uh, resubmitted to uh, Maureen and Steve Harding. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go over all of the comments or not at this point. Um, I certainly can if, if that's the wish of the board. Um, they have all been addressed in uh, I received a, uh, a copy of the email from Steve Harding that uh, he's satisfied with all the comments. Well, the, the, unfortunately, the board has not seen right. the, right. the resubmittal, so. We just submitted to yeah. <laughs> so I'd be glad to go over them if, if you want. Would you like them, uh, John, to go through the. The hydrant is included now. The hydrant is included. The, as the well as the eight-inch water line. Excuse me. As well as the eight-inch water line. Yes. We've uh, requested that. So you are going to do the eight-inch line? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm good, Barbara. I don't need to go through it. Any other questions for Christine? I have one other question while we have you up here. We don't have a letter of financial capability. Yes. Um, actually, I missed a, the letter. Has been there has been a memo that was submitted by the town manager to me, and when I wrote the memo to the planning board, I neglected to mention it, and the applicant had provided me with another copy. It was uh, sent to me by the manager, dated August 4th, so it was provided in advance of the, the memo being written last week. So I would like to say that. It does say, I review documents related to the financial capability of the Paputa Club to undertake the project plan for the clubhouse. It is my determination that the Paputa Club has the financial cap capability to complete the project. Sign Malcolm McGovern, Town Manager. Fine. Anybody have any other questions right now? Yeah. Um, does the DP have to review this project? This Is there a site? Is there no, a? We're not, the, the, uh, you mean as far as the stormwater permit is concerned? Well, stormwater permit, or is there a site location? There is permit? not a site location application. I did check on that. Okay. There's, so it's, there is it's, no, it's grandfathered, or is it just, um, you're not adding any enough we're additional? Not, we're not meeting any of the thresholds okay. that would kick it into DEP. Okay. Uh, either neither site location nor uh, stormwater. Okay. And I, I do want to explain the, the discrepancy. If you let, read uh, Steve Harding's comments, he mentioned a discrepancy in the calculations the, of the impervious surface. Um, that had to do with this parking lot right here. There's an existing parking area up next to the maintenance building. Um, we neglected to show it on the existing conditions plan so when he compared the existing conditions plan to the proposed plan, he thought that this was new parking. Uh, the existing conditions plan has been corrected to show that there is an existing parking area next to the maintenance. So it's just 410 feet of impervious surface, I think. Well, we right. came up with a net decrease of 410 10. square feet. Right. And then he came up with, a he came up with 3,000 plus. Um, in had to do with that parking lot there. Yeah. This sheet here, I get this sheet to show the board what we're adding for pavement and what we're deleting for pavement. The red represents um, additional pavement. The green represents pavement that is being removed and put it back into landscaping. And this is, and this is how we came up with the net decrease of 410 square feet. Other questions? There's a, we had to hear something about south of the road is kind of handled that. I'm not sure. Right. I'm not sure if that's a big issue or not. Uh, we did address it in our, 
in our comments. Uh, solid waste is currently located in this area right here. Um, it is screened and um, it will continue to be screened. Um, so it's, it's containerized in this enclosed area okay. on the first floor. And forgive me, if, if it may be in here, are you having a fluid cooler or cooling tower change or anything to the job? John? We don't think so. Okay. Uh, there's a unit on the rooftop now that will probably be exchanged for a different unit on the okay. rooftop. Okay. All right. New. But nothing that's exterior to the building like you'd have for a heat pump system or anything um, that's remote. We, there will be some um, split system units on the ground right here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how big they are, but they're... Okay. But we'll those... probably be able to hide them with bushes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Anything else? Go right ahead. Um, I just wanted to confirm that the Mr. Mitchell submitted a revised plan today, and I believe the plan's intent was to show his willingness to address the completeness items. My expectation is that you would resubmit plans for next month's meeting. Yes, right. Those new plans would show all of this, so the planning yes. board would have okay. an opportunity to see all of that. It wouldn't be something that you would never see. So even if you deem this complete, you would still have an opportunity to determine whether or not, for example, solid waste was adequate. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about the building itself and introduce it to anybody who might be watching? Uh, if you'd like, did you all see it last month, or do you want me to walk through it again? The main change on the exterior is new fenestration, a new entry in the center. Right now the entry is over here and the center entry gives us a ramp and handicapped accessibility to the middle of the building. The old entry um, is brought up to the floor level. Right now it's a split level and this portion of the building is added so that from here over is one big room for ballroom functions. Um, on you, keeping the existing roof, we are adding uh, dormers, most of which are um, real, but in, I mean, this, this is glass on most of these. All, all of the ones facing the golf course, on these two, they are panels. And, and on this one, it is a porch that extends out to cover the entry. Um, on the back, on this side, uh, there's a, a um, fire escape and access to the kitchen and screening uh, a, a fence to screen the propane tanks and a place for recyclables here screened. And then these are wood slats with a gap between them. The uh, new HVAC units will probably be in the wall here with split with components down on the ground and this is a green space that we're able to put something around. Uh, the deck is being extended um, in, on two sides and it's going over to a ledge that the deck now has a bridge to. Um, new siding, new windows, new colors, we're not sure what yet, new roof shingles. Um, you know what those will be, the siding and the shingles? The shingles? Um, 30 year heavyweight something, I don't know, probably uh, pretty neutral. Um, color schemes, are, we've talked about red and we've talked about green, but we're going to get some women involved in helping to choose the color scheme. Good idea. That's smart. <laughs> Do you want to see the inside? Or? Anybody want to see the inside? Everybody happy to see the inside? <laughs> well, any questions? <laughs> any questions? 
Do we need to have a site walk for something like this? Well, that's up to us. Does yeah. everybody feel like they need to go to Kaputik, or has everybody been there yeah. at some point? Did you want one, Scott? Or? Well, I'd like a round of golf, too. You'd like a round of golf? <laughs> I'm not sure that's not bribery. <laughs> We're not allowed to do that. Anybody feel the need? No. Uh, yeah. It's public. If you want to go over, we can. I think most of us are familiar with the site. We're not making that many changes. Well, if there are no questions, do we have a motion for the board to consider? Uh, oh, we need to discuss whether the other thing. Do we want to have a public hearing? We do that before or after? No, we do that next time uh, because we have to send notice out. Public, oh, sure, we can do that. Please go ahead. In doing the motion for completeness, do we need to identify the waivers? No. Based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Perpuda Club for a 1250 square foot expansion of the clubhouse and reconfiguration of the parking lot located at 300 Spurwink Avenue be deemed complete. Second. Do a second? No second. Okay, any discussion? When we say based on the plans and materials submitted, there have been some discussions of, of changes. Is, is, that, is that deemed to include what has been submitted here orally in terms of the subsequent discussions? Or do we need to separately reference what Maureen was talking about? I would leave that up to you. I mean, those new plans you have not set eyes upon. Right. You've heard us discuss them only. So if you... But if it's you been were represented to us yes. that certain issues have been addressed, and when we're saying that we're approving what's been submitted, in my mind, we're incorporating the oral representations tonight. And I don't know if we need to express that. Right. Somehow. And I guess what I'm saying, if, if you were discussing an approval motion, I would be extremely uncomfortable with you suggesting you approve a plan you haven't set eyes on yourself. For completeness, I think there's more flexibility. If you want to be explicit and say you're including the plans that have been submitted to the planner and the town engineer, you can do that. If you don't want to specifically reference them, I think there's room for you so to So the do ones that have been submitted to the town engineer are the ones that you talked about that got submitted today? Yeah, I have a set and the town engineer has a set and the applicant has committed to providing all of those changes to the planning board for resubmission for the next meeting. So I guess we could say a condition that the, the plans that we will see have, will incorporate all these changes. Is Based on the representation in the letter from Steve Harvey, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Include that as part of the motion. That it's up to you what you want to include. The way I've interpreted this in the past, and, and I, I want to go back to Ms. Fallender's comment about do we have to list the waivers? We've never explicitly listed waivers uh, because you have documentation that shows what's complete, what are waivers. And so I've always treated the whole, based on the plans and materials submitted, everything you've gotten, plus everything that's discussed tonight, all together you've made, those are your factual basis for your decisions. So if you wanted to get more explicit and start listing out all your waivers, certainly you could do that. If you want to reference specific plans, you could do that. This is, I've tried the kind of comprehensive approach that isn't as explicit. Any other opinions about that? I guess I'd feel more comfortable. I don't see a date on this email that was on our desks today. It's probably up there, cut off. But including the um, representations of Stephen Harding in the email to Maureen O'Meara dated August. August 19th, 2008. So, is that okay to amend it that way, Jim? Yes, that's fine. Okay. So, do we have a second to the motion as amended? No second. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor? Um, now, let's talk about a public hearing. I, for one, think we absolutely should have a public hearing. Yeah, it's a public property. I mean, it's a private <coughs> club, but it's a no public property. So is everybody in agreement that? Yeah. Okay. So do we have a further motion for the board to consider then? 
Yes. Um, if you are going to make motion B, you would also be tabling the application, uh, which is fine. But are there any other, before you table it, are there any other issues that you want to discuss with the applicant before you table it? Do we need to vote on this? Did we already vote on? We're going to vote on both at the same time. Okay. Be it ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular September 16th, 2008 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Are, is there any discussion about any of the waivers? Is everybody comfortable? The town engineer has said, and the fire department, they don't have any problems with them. Um, and then there are a couple of other items like lighting and putting the sign on the plan. My understanding from the memo from Steve Harding was that those had all been addressed. And the fire hydrant's been taken care of. And then the landscaping. Um, what is going to be in the um, landscaping in the parking lot? Yeah, the islands. The landscaping of parking lots. Um, we don't have any uh, any plan other than other than grass areas that we're creating. Um, we don't have any uh, landscaping, but we we do intend to add landscaping for the next submission. We're gonna. We're going to add some landscaping within the parking lot and surrounding the parking lot. Does anybody have any suggestions they'd like to make about the landscaping or just work with Maureen and yep. come up with a yep. plan? Okay. Anything else anybody wants? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We did vote on the public hearing. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
to introduce any changes or? I will. Uh, good evening. My name is Owens McCullough, civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics, here tonight on behalf of Wiley Enterprises, LLC, for the Eastman Meadows condominium project. Uh, with me tonight is Joel Fitzpatrick, uh, if you had any questions of the applicant directly. We were last before the board on May 20th, at which time we made a pretty comprehensive presentation that reviewed the project uh, in some detail, and at that time the board uh, was able to grant preliminary approval for the project with the condition uh, that we work with the town engineer to address uh, their review comments. Uh, since that May meeting, we have been working with the town engineer uh, to get through the review comments. Uh, we've made a supplemental submittal uh, to the town engineer. Those comments, the engineer has reviewed those, Steve Harding at Oast Associates, and issued a follow-up uh, letter, which is actually in your packets, and it had some very uh, minor uh, comments, which uh, we'll certainly take care of. Uh, uh, in fact, we're getting ready to make a resubmittal back to him tomorrow, which is pretty simple. Uh, and I'll quickly just touch on those so the board's aware of those. Uh, the first item is really un unrelated to our project, but there's a culvert crossing right here. And it's an eight inch culvert, and apparently uh, just in the, this recent, this past year, that culvert has been plugged quite frequently. Uh, there's some suspicion that it might even be a beaver in there doing that. Uh, <coughs> Bob Malley, the public works director, has cleared that culvert out from time to time. And OST has recommended that that culvert be replaced to a 12-inch uh, culvert through there. Um, our project um, has a stormwater detention pond in this area here, which is also a uh, filtration basin for water quality. Our post-development runoff, the runoff from our site after development, will actually be less than the pre-development runoff because of the ponds and how much we have to detain and treat. So we're, at, so we're not in any way contributing uh, to that culvert. And so Joel Fitzpatrick, the, the town engineer just noted that in the uh, in his review because the culvert extends across that wetland um, and onto our property. So the applicant has been talking with uh, Bob Malley, the public works director, on what might happen in that location. And we'll, we'll meet next time we come back to the board, we should have some refinements on that. But we're not proposing at this point to do anything with that culvert, just simply because it's an existing condition and we're not contributing anything more to it. But we're going to continue to talk with the public works director and we'll have an update for you before we come back and work through that. The other item uh, that Post had in their review memorandum is on our typical drainage structure. There was a reference to a type M uh, part of the drainage structure and that was a miscellaneous typo that needed to be removed. Pretty simple to take care of. Um, as you know, we're installing sewer down along Eastman Road here. And as part of that sewer, we're installing services to the property lines of each of those houses that are up there as we come by. The town is contributing some money to that as we come by to do that. Uh, one of the comments OST had was they would like to see some curb stops at each of, which is basically a valve, at each of the uh, <coughs> endpoints of the services. So we'll add those to that notation to the plan. Um, and they had some specific comments that they wanted to be a brass ball valve in, in it, which is less corrosive, which corrodes less than other types, and we'll certainly add that information to the plan. Um, another minor detail is under drains that, so that go in the, uh, in the ground, uh, we wrap them with the Chia textile to keep the fines out. The uh, town engineer mentioned that uh, they would prefer to, to, see, to use a type 140N instead of 600X. We agree with that. It should be a 140N, so uh, that's pretty simple to take care of. Uh, then they had some suggestions for some minor, minor wording changes about utilities in the condominium documents, which uh, the applicant's attorney will certainly take care of. Um, I also wanted to make mention that on, I think it was August 12th is the date of the letter, the town did get their CFUP, uh, which is the uh, Compensation Fee Utilization Plan for uh, Trout Book, as you might recall, this project is in the Trout Brook watershed. The Trout Brook watershed is a non-attainment watershed, which means it doesn't meet water quality goals. And as a result, uh, the town pursued um, 
this compensation fee utilization plan in this project, uh, should it get all of its approvals in place, would be obligated based on the amount of impervious surface it creates to pay a fee into this fund that would be used to go towards um, improvements within the watershed. And that fee is about just a little over $25,000. So it's some pretty nice seed money to go into some other improvements. And Maureen, <coughs> if you were interested, I know she's got a copy of the plan that prioritizes some of those improvements. Um, and so any development that might um, go in the Trout Brook watershed uh, would also be subject to this and could also pay into that fund. So the idea is that enough money gets in the fund, some improvements can be done. So uh, that's an update. Uh, tonight, we're really here to begin and move, start working through the final approval process. Uh, on August 1st, we did make a final plan submittal uh, to the town. Uh, this included some updated plans with some technical additions and modifications per the town engineer's review. We also updated uh, the landscape plans, focusing on some additional buffering around the Mary Brock residence right here. And then uh, some updates to the landscaping on the street trees uh, that are going around the internal roadways. Uh, as part of that process, we did meet with the town planner to go over the landscape plan, any suggestions that Maureen might have, and I think we got to the point that we were able to incorporate those changes and get them into the plan. Uh, it's a fairly aggressive plan. Just to give you an idea, phase one of the project, which is really just coming up through this area here, um, has about $75,000 worth of landscaping. And, it, and that doesn't even include the landscaping that goes around the building. So it is a, a very aggressive landscape plan um, that the applicant's willing to go forward with that. And that estimate is based upon his contractor going out to landscaping nurseries and pricing out um, the plans uh, for the project. So just wanted to note that. Uh, also in the final plan submittal, we included the rather detailed condominium documents uh, that I believe have been forwarded on to the town attorney for review. I, I think Maureen's nodding, so I think I got that right. Uh, the other thing that we submitted was open space and the pedestrian easement deeds. As you uh, recall, uh, there's this open space area here is going to be turned over to the town so that it will go in with all the other open space around. And then there's two other open space areas right here on this side and over here. And both of those open space areas are going to be retained by the condominium association um, as open space, but will have a pedestrian trail that the applicant is going to construct through here to match into the uh, trail system within the Winnick Woods area. And then also there's another easement that goes over the sidewalk that comes into the, into the project and connects, also connects into the Winnick Woods system. So there's two points of trail access into the project site. And because those will be going through the open space that will be retained by the association, we needed to give the town easements so that pedestrians would have the right of access over those locations. The other thing that I think, Barbara, you may have mentioned that when we were going through prior reviews was, I think, asked if there was a blasting plan for the project. Because we do, it was, it was you, right? <laughs> okay. Um, up, in this, up in this area here, we have quite a bit of ledge to come out. So um, as part of our DEP site location application that we filed, um, we, all, we had to do a blasting plan for that. So I included a copy of that in your submittal here. That blasting plan gets reviewed by the DEP, by their, um, uh, their, by, by their internal geotechnical for, folks, um, and then comes back to us with any comments. We've done a number of these blasting plans with the DEP, so I think we've refined them down where we're pretty close to what they want, but they'll take a look at it. It provides the parameters of the charges and the blasts and uh, the pre-blast surveys to protect any adjacent houses and, and, and that sort of thing. So I did include that in there just so you knew that we, we did actually put one together. <laughs> uh, and as that's a good lead-in to the next piece, which we are currently working through the MDP site location review and NRPA uh, process. We have um, a wetland impact here. 
and uh, because our project generates more than three acres of non-revegetated surface, we had to file the DEP site location application. That's been in for a couple months now, Joel, going on a couple months. And we did get uh, um, review comments back from Ken Volok, the uh, uh, review engineer um, at the DEP, and the package is going back to him tomorrow. Um, a lot of his comments were very similar to the comments that we had just responded to OST Associates, so they dovetailed in very nicely. So um, <coughs> we're getting that back, and they were all technical in nature, um, uh, mostly related to things like questions, clarifications on the watershed mapping, uh, what they refer to as the times of concentrations and how we calculated some of those things. And, uh, so we have uh, put together a response to that. And I would expect that once we get that back, that um, that should pretty much button up the technical review. So I'm hoping that then we can start moving forward with, with the actual uh, permit. Uh, we are the we're on that, Owens. About how long does that take from the time, in your experience? Mm -hmm. Well, they have they have up to six months to go through the review. But uh, my expectation would, would be that we would either see a permit, I think, uh, towards the end of September or October time frame. Um, we did before we filed this application. Well, we've been in front of the board many times, but. We also spent quite a bit of time with the Army Corps of Engineers and uh, the main DEP meeting with them. They all were all out on the site. They walked it and went over the development plan. Spent a lot of time with them up front, primarily because of the wetlands. Uh, there were a couple of vernal pools, as I indicated, one here. There was one here. And then there's another one over here. Now, there are potential vernal pools because uh, they uh, they took on the characteristics of one, so we just went ahead and treated them as a vernal pool. We actually had U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Rod Rodney Howe went all the way down and met with U.S. Fish and Wildlife and put together, this was all a year ago, um, actually back in December of 07 and into January that we worked through all that before we actually filed the applications. So all that upfront work we think will help expedite the review because they're not seeing this for the first time. They've actually gone through it in a lot of detail before. So, uh, we, The applicant tonight, what we're hoping to do is starting to move forward with the final review process. We would like to try to get through the completeness review tonight for final approval. And actually the town engineer went through and went through the check checklist for completeness review. I think it's in the memorandum and packet. And you know, it was either some two items were non-applicable. The rest had yes, but they met them except for the DEP, which had a, a P in it, which I assume meant partial. We're in process, and um, I know that in the past the town has, um, speaking with Maureen, I believe the town has uh, allowed the final uh, review process to go forward, uh, conditional that the DEP approvals come through, which we would expect in the next couple of months. So. We'd like to start that process now, beginning with the completeness review tonight. And then hopefully we'd like to go to the public hearing next month, because I believe you need to have another public hearing before you can act on the final plan application. So we thought this would be good timing to come back to you and start that process tonight. So, um, and then once we get the site location in hand, um, we would hope that we would be in ready to go for a final plan approval with the board. So that's the update. Uh, I can walk you through any questions or anything else you might want to cover tonight. But um, I, I didn't go through the whole project in great detail because we spent quite a bit of time at the last meeting. Uh, but I have all that with me in case we had questions. But anyway, thank you. Questions from the board? Reading the emails about uh, um, the request for approval before all the permits have been complete, and I saw uh, specifically the DEP one, and I saw Maureen's email that said it's customary. We've done it before for 20 years. I guess can you educate me on on that part if that's the right way to ask it? Can I add something to well? Why don't you let, me, let me answer that. But just so you know, I've been working here uh, in 
two months, it'll be 18 years. Mm -hmm. So I used to think, you know, everything that happened before me was old, and now I know that the things that have happened on here are old. Um, but prior to 18 years ago, the board routinely uh, would grant, grant final approval, and they would just condition the final approval upon receiving DEP permits. And, and I don't know how many people are familiar with the DEP, but I mean, for years, the DEP was notorious for having very long review times. And, and I think they worked really hard and, and tightened up their reviews quite a bit. But it's been the board's practice to expect those permits to be issued, but not to hold up those permits uh, hold up their own local review process. So, you know, if you want to say, no, we are not going to deem you complete until you get your DEP permit, certainly you can do that as a board. You have the authority to do that. In the past, the practice has often been to proceed uh, forward with evidence from the applicant that the permits have been applied for. Um, there have been many approvals granted. When I say approvals granted, I'm thinking like the Stonegate subdivision, the Highland subdivision, uh, where permits, uh, the approvals were granted by the town with the condition that you couldn't go forward until you got your DEP permit. And if for some reason the DEP permit required changes to the plan, the applicant would then have to return to the local planning board to get the plans revised. So I don't think we haven't had problems with that in a long time. But certainly the board can, can choose to go with not moving forward until that's done. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that your own review process requires an applicant to return within six months of being granted preliminary approval. So if you do adhere strictly to what your ordinance says, you're probably going to be in the position of receiving requests from applicants for extensions of the preliminary and, it's, and it's, it's really up to you. I would also point out this is a very good section to keep in mind when you are at the point where you're rewriting the subdivision ordinance, which is on your list of things to do. I guess... I understand what, what the past practice is, and I think we need to, keep, to proceed very carefully when we're deviating from past practice and explain why we're doing it. And I kind of tried to parse through the ordinance. And it seems to me that the ordinance says in very clear language, as the email we had points out, that all of these permits shall be in place before we can deem an application complete. There is also in the subdivision ordinance in 16.35 a provision for waivers. And we routinely grant waivers, but there's some very specific conditions for waivers. A waiver isn't something that gets granted as a matter of course. You have to establish in each case, and we do, although perhaps somewhat informally, undue hardship, practical difficulties or restriction upon imaginative and otherwise desirable design that may result. The conditions in the ordinance that you need to apply as a basis for granting a waiver. I guess I am troubled as a new member of the planning board the first time that I've been involved at this stage of a final subdivision process, simply ignoring a mandatory part of our ordinance and on a blanket basis saying we always waive the necessity for DEP permits in this case without specific findings on a specific project of undue hardship, hardship that's unusual for this project. If what we're saying is that on a, as a general legislative matter that we think that the town should not hold up its final approval but instead make implementation of subdivision plan conditional on the DEP approval, if that's what we think should be done on a routine basis, I feel that has to require an ordinance amendment and it is not something that the planning board can do. So it, it seems to me in order to follow our own ordinances, we could ask the applicant to provide to us evidence of specific instances of hardship or other practical difficulties as outlined in our statute as a basis for a waiver, which the applicant has not provided because we haven't routinely requested it. So I'm not criticizing you for that. Or 
we follow the process that says, look, we do preliminary approvals. That's the time you get your DEP approvals. And it's really not appropriate to come back to the town until we have the benefit of the comments of all of the other agencies can take those into account and our citizens can take those into account when we have our final public hearing, should we choose to do so. Um, and I hate to make any particular project the one project that has to uh, feel the brunt of, of what I, I recognize as a change of policy, but from my lawyer's background, I have to say that I don't otherwise think we're complying with our ordinance as I would like for us to be. I think perhaps as a matter of fact in all of those other cases, the standards found in the waiver provision could have been met had we addressed them specifically. Um, and I don't know whether or not we did, but certainly in this application, there has been no attempt to satisfy the conditions of 16.35 for a waiver on this particular matter, a waiver with a condition attached, which is, I guess, how I would, to the extent our statute provides any basis for doing this, that, that's the section I would think we would have to go to. Scott, um, you deal with this, uh, or similar, my impression is you deal with some of this in other towns. What have you had to do? Have you had to get the approval from the DEP before they proceed, or? Uh, I think Owens would uh, agree with this. Probably, I'd say, 90 to 95 percent of the towns, um, you can get final approval at the local level without the having DEP approval, you know, in your back pocket. So it, it tends to be a conditional approval. So it's not just Cape Elizabeth that may be doing No, this. it's most towns, uh, it, it's that way. So um, certainly, you know, maybe as Maureen suggests, we need to look at our language um, and, and maybe revise that at some point. Um, I don't know if the applicant can show hardship uh, in this, it's I have given it, I have to sit down and look at yeah. it and see yeah. if we could prove that. I'd like to know um, a little more about where you are at with the DEP um, because um, I would hate for you know us to go too far in, down the road and then the, D, the DEP say, well, we don't agree with the stormwater um, calculations and they have to change the you know the layout or add another structure or whatever and then they have to come back to us again with a you know a new layout or, or revision that I mean, I just slows down the process so sure. um, I, maybe I could uh, provide some follow-up on that the engineering comments that we did get back from uh, Canada to DEP um, we have like I said, that's going in this week back to them, but we have, there were some questions on the modeling. We adjusted the model and we ran some numbers and uh, none of that changed, materially changed the layout of the units. It had to do with um, uh, clarifications on our filtration basin. For instance, additional spot grades and questions on the water quality volume and the height of the weirs and a lot of that kind of uh, information. So. Um, we have put the, back the response, nothing in there uh, led us to believe that it would materially change how the layout of the, of the project went. Um, so uh, we're, we're pretty confident that we can work through um, all of that. Um, you know, as far as a hardship goes or the conditions, I guess I'd have to sit down and look at it. I, I just was talking to Joel from our perspective, um, we wanted to start the process now because in, we got approval on May 20th, which was June 20th, July. That was almost three, going on almost three months ago. The preliminary approval is good for six months, I think, if I understand it correctly. So if May 20th, uh, that would put us through uh, November 20th, I believe. So what one thing that we were a little bit concerned about was is let's say we got DEP site location approval um, 
in the end of October, okay? And then you put us on the agenda for a completeness review in November, the public hearing in December, and final, now we're beyond the six months. So th that in itself does sort of create a hardship as far as the timing of the project goes. Or maybe the board can grant an extension without too much effort to that, which is fine uh, with us. We just want to make sure we don't get caught in that in that timing because six months is not a lot of time to from a preliminary approval to file. I think that's one of the ordinance uh, the issues we have in our ordinance, but I think that the standards imposed on us by the statute for granting extensions are much lighter and easier to satisfy. Um, and the fact that a, a pending DEP approval had gotten delayed in the DEP is a fairly easy burden to meet, it seems to me, for the granting of an extension of a six-month time period, as opposed to the undue hardship standard, which means that the hardship for you is different than it is on, you know, generally projects that get bogged down. The DEP, to me, that's a higher standard. Owens, oh, so if we granted you an extension because you've come in tonight, mm -hmm. you know, saying maybe running six months from tonight. Um, does that create any problems or any hardship for you in terms of, I'm assuming this project isn't even going, you wouldn't even anticipate doing anything until next spring or, or summer, so we're not talking about. Yeah, you know, in talking to Joel, the, well, uh, while Elaine was speaking, I talked to Joel real quick and th that's absolutely fine with him. We just wanted to make sure we didn't get caught in this. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll go backwards. <laughs> I, given, um, I, I guess I've never paid that much attention to this particular section of the ordinance until now, although I probably <laughs> should have. Um, we need to change the ordinance. I don't think there's a question about it. But in light of the fact that we haven't, and given what you've said now, I think it's prudent not to grant completeness and, and let you work with the DEP and get that out of the way and give you an extension tonight so you don't sit and worry about it Thank you. and ask any other, I mean, if everybody else agrees with me, I mean, I feel very comfortable saying, you know, let's start the clock ticking, you've come in now, um, let's make it from now because you're working on that DEP permit and, and you don't have complete control over them. That's for sure. So is everybody comfortable making a motion to extend the... I'm of two minds, I guess. We haven't been making an issue of it until now, I don't think. And Except that we haven't really had... We haven't had a project this large. I mean, it's, I, I don't remember what happened with the former Sperling Woods in terms of the DEP. I mean, Cross Hill was 97 lots. I wasn't on the plan right, board, at, so at, I at 97 that. lots, they they received their DEP permit after the town had granted final approval. Uh, just about everybody gets it after the approval. Well, I think Elaine is right, though, and if there's somebody who's going to be upset about it, the like code is clear, very clear. And if the applicant doesn't have a problem, I mean, if it happens, let's say you come back two months from now and you're still or three months from now, it's still, you know, we're still working at that, and it's not quite over. They're dragging their feet, then maybe we need to look at things again, and maybe in the next Does this couple open of months, up? we need Does this to open up the town to be sued if we're not following our own You know, it could. Every time you don't follow the work, <laughs> I really think we should grant an extension now, and we should amend that part of the code immediately and send it to the town council and that we should proceed in the proper fashion. We have somebody out there who is very astute and is looking at everything. And yeah, this has been could brought up. even longer. Exactly. Now, you said you're, you're not going to get in the ground until next year, next spring anyway? No. So <laughs> th theoretically you could get your DEP, we could give the extension to get your DEP and everything. Then we would on. come back because the, I, if I understand it, the, the completeness review process. I mean, we make the request, and you get on the next month for completeness review. Then the next month for a public hearing, 
Yeah, can you do final approval at the same night as the public hearing? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really just about three months, you know, fate would have it, I'll get my DEP permit, you know, two days after. Tomorrow. The, the two days after the submittal date, you know, to get yeah. back onto the next agenda. So, you know, it's probably, from the time we get our DEP permit, it's probably three months to get yeah. through, you know, the rest of the town process. So it would be very helpful if it's within your purview to grant an extension so that we can at least know that we, you know, have that time and preserve the preliminary approval. So extension like six months from today? Is mm -hmm. that what you're talking about? Yeah. Absolutely. I hope we're still not in DEP six months. That's now. fine. <laughs> I mean, you have, that would give you the time and not to worry about it. If, if for whatever reason the DEP does not, you don't get your approval in six months from the DEP, which is possible, highly unlikely, but certainly it's possible, I know from experience. <laughs> um, Been there too. <laughs> can we grant another extension, um, Maureen? Can we do what we want? I don't believe the ordinance limits the amount of extensions you could grant. I don't believe it. I looked through these provisions okay. earlier, and I believe that's correct. Because I would hate for that to happen where well, you actually... You know, uh, the other yeah. thing is that you can use this as a lever with the DEP, too. Oh, yeah, that saying they're yeah, holding up the process. they're going to listen to that. <laughs> Please, Mr. DEP, they're holding up the process until we get this permit, so we need to work as hard as we can. I don't mind groveling. I'll try. We're from the government. <laughs> We're here to help, right? I would also hope that within six months we could have our ordinance appropriately amended. I think we'll do that immediately. <laughs> no. You won't? No. No. Okay. no. 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 Well, we need to start the process. We need you, to start well, the process. You, need to, you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. yeah. Well, some of the things aren't as important as that. Okay. Well, I, oh. I have a question for you, Maureen. Um, this is not a, a granting of an extension is not something that the applicant had formally requested. So it didn't appear on our agenda, so it didn't appear on any public notice. Do we have any problem with that? No, I don't think you do, because the notice said that you were going to begin the final approval process review. And I think it's reasonable to incorporate under that umbrella a, a, an action that would extend the review period. I think it's completely consistent with what the board can be, the range of options of what you could have accomplished tonight. Because I think it's a great solution, and I think everything we, we're doing here is being looked at with a great deal of scrutiny. And I think, like Jim said, in the end, I think we may save ourselves and the applicant time and trouble if we can avoid a litigation context. And this seems to me to be kind of a simple way of doing it, since you're not going to start construction in the fall anyway. That would be absolutely fine. I okay. appreciate that. So do we have a, board, a motion for the board to consider? Uh, is it? I move that we grant an extension to Wiley LLC for his uh, Eastman Meadows subdivision. I don't know the exact address for six months from this date, which is uh, February 19th. Is that right? For the submittal of the final. For a submittal of the final subdivision approval. Fair enough. Thank you. Winging it. Did you get it? No, I didn't get it. I want to say it again, Jim. Oh, man. Or, 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 Jim, would you like her to just assume that you're going to use the same heading we have for the draft motion and just yeah. insert the stuff you would insert it? Yeah, that'd be that fine. fair, Harami? Okay, can you, can you give it to me? Uh, hold on, let me Sorry. get the uh, paperwork. Somebody's got it on top. Here, right here, yeah. Jim. That's the intro part. All right. Okay, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the fact presented, um, the application of Wiley Enterprises LLC for major subdivision review, a private road review, well, do we, well, and a resource protection permit, do we, or is that, do we want to include that in? All right. For Eastman Meadows, a 46 unit condominium with clubhouse and one single family lot located at 68 Eastman Road, be granted an extension from the final subdivision approval until uh, February 19th. Until February 19th. Or do we want to say the meeting? What, do we want to look at the meeting? Say the regular February, two the regular February 2009 meeting, planning board meeting. Thank you. Okay. Give a second. Second. 
Second. All in favor? Okay. Oh. Are there any other questions or any other comments that anybody would like to make? Elaine. I had one other. And this is a question also on completeness. I see that we have in our package the proposed forms of easement deeds, the, very, the granting deed and the pedestrian easement and the other easements. Um, do we have any indication that the form of those documents is acceptable to the town? Because it seems like that's another thing that we're supposed to have as part of our completeness, and, and I hadn't seen that. They, they have submitted um, those deeds, and per a letter that was sent to John Wall, who is the town's legal representation for the planning board dated August 14th, Dear John, please find and close the final subdivision plan of the East Meadows Condominium Project. We'd like to ask you to review the condominium documents and deeds. Uh, so we have submitted them to our town attorney for review, and we're, we're awaiting his comments. Okay, so hopefully that, yeah. that yeah, preliminary that approval will also be there. And I had a question reading through the pedestrian easement mm -hmm. in terms of the location of those pedestrian easements as it relates to sidewalks. The way that I look at the document, and I don't know if this is the intent or not, when you talk about the easement through the sidewalks to get to the deeded land, you're always pointing to the right-hand side of the drawing as though it's only those sidewalks that are subject to the public easement. But when I look at the deed language, it looks to me like you're referring to all of the sidewalks in the project. And I'm not clear what the intent is there. Uh, thank you. The intent is. Uh, just the sidewalk that runs from Eastman Road along here into the into the open space and then the pedestrian trail or the pedestrian trail that comes through here so I'll take another look at that because the, the okay. intent wasn't to make it blank we wanted to give people a clear path you know from the open space to Eastman and vice versa on both ends but not really make it open to the public through everything. So. That's what I thought your intent was. I want to take another look at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Other comments? Yes. Uh, Maureen, who is, uh, has anybody looked at the uh, blasting plan on behalf of the town? Is that, is that a fire department? Um, That's a good question. You should that be reviewed by, or can we have it reviewed by somebody? I don't know if the town engineer did do the review and didn't find anything wrong with it, uh, but I will check and make sure that somebody reviewed the blasting plan. Yeah, I think that'd be good. There, I, I have a comment about the blast. Mm -hmm. uh, it is my understanding, and I'm not aware, that when you say should, that means one thing, and when you say shall, that means another thing. And I noticed there was a combination of shoulds and shalls, and I really think it, all, it should all be shall, which is much more definitive. So. Could I ask that? I mean, I, I marked some places. You see, where are you seeing this language in the ordinance? Uh, I, or? I, I, oh, no, in the blast. No, I see blast. where she's meaning. It should say shall. It's, it should be yep. shall all over, and there are probably yep. 20 places where should should change to shall. I actually read this. <laughs> it wasn't exciting. But yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. It's hard to make them exciting. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think you're right. It shall. should say shall. I mean, it's. The implication is shall, but it doesn't specifically it doesn't say that. Say so that. I, it should I, means well you have a choice of yes or no. And I think blasting is really difficult and the abutters are always very nervous about it and the more definitive you can be, the better off you are. I, I agree with so, that. Um, and I have a couple little nitty gritties that okay. I can mention if unless somebody else has something. Right. In the um, in the condominium declarations, the, um, on page 3, paragraph 3.2, it states there are 25 buildings, but there are actually 23 buildings, which is stated somewhere else. I counted it 14 times, just to make sure. Where are you looking wrong. at? Page three. Of what's on this tab? 3.2 of the condominium declarations. Condominium documents? Yes, the documents. Oh, the clubhouse? It's correctly listed on page eight of the document, but not on page three. 
So could you just take a look at that? I wonder if you got, I just was I don't, you know, I wonder if you count the, the quadruplexes as two buildings. You are counting them as two buildings? Well, no, I just wonder if the attorney went. Well, I think they it. may have, because on page yeah. 8 on the top, it says um, it to be composed of up to 23 buildings, and then on yeah. page 3, it says 25 buildings. just needs to be consistent. I agree. And, and yeah. I hate to be nitty-gritty, but... You know, the less we have for anybody to ask any questions about, the nope. better off we are. Um, and then on page 10, on the open space plan, I believe somebody has a typo there. It says 13.33 acres of open space, and it's actually 13.39. Mm -hmm. I know, but if you look at if you look at the plan at the Right, that's correct. Okay, so maybe that's what the three three maybe they the rounded space. and I got the wrong one. Thank you. So that is not incorrect. Okay. Right. Um, does anybody have any other questions at all? I but there's three open space areas, right? No, there are two. There's okay. two open space areas and one pedestrian easement. Actually, two pedestrian easements. One that is in an open space and one that's And then there's an area that's going to be deeded, deeded to towns. But the, the, the lower area is, is contiguous, so I think they're calling Yeah, considering that? Yeah. Because it refers only to two places. in the I'm just looking at that. Uh, yeah, that's contiguous. That's correct. But uh, the area that's actually being given to the town is less than 13.32 because they're components. Uh, have that in here someplace. Yeah, I'll find where that is. And it'll be transferred. Well, it's the 13.32 minus 2.39 acres. And I should add a note that should be, <laughs> it should show on the plan the acreage. I'll make sure that that's on there. Right, we'll just check that number in, in the documents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you. Is there anything else anybody has? Because I only have two more quick things. I don't know if I'm quick or not. I know one of them we talked about before. When you put in the sewer line, um, you're only paving half the road, right? So half the road's yeah. going to be nice new paving, and half the road's going to look crummy like it is now. Can we please talk hard to the town. About I'll this? be honest. The, the I mean, the issue for the applicant is I don't know if any of you have been following paving costs. It's terrible. It's, They're awful. Um, I mean. You know, DOT has pulled $13 million in yeah. projects. I mean, it's just, uh, just to give you an idea, the, I, I have an airport project I'm in the middle of where the paving escalation is just unbelievable. But what, what it is, is I've learned more about asphalt than I've ever wanted to know. But uh, the issue is the liquid asphalt that goes into the, the mix that you see that goes down, it's the blend of aggregates and everything else. The liquid asphalt back in, April was like 300, this is the liquid asphalt, it was like 300 and, I think it was $330 or $50 a ton. It's now, seven, as of today, I think it was $775 a ton. Wow. And just to give you an idea, on a thousand tons of paving, that's about $19,000 of increase. And a thousand tons of paving isn't much mixed. So the DOT, a lot of people have just suspended their paving. I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon because it's a supply and demand issue. One of the uh, asphalt suppliers has filed Chapter 11. Um, and uh, nodding his head, he's probably, Scott's probably seeing this too. So it is just unbelievable. How much of it can you install in the um, shoulder of the road? I know there's, I, I, I've looked at that carefully and it is difficult because there are trees and there are, or are you just going to have to go into the asphalt completely? We're going to have to just go the, the center of the width that's out there now. 
when, when we pay. And I just patched that. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing, the other thing I wanted to mention was, in the traffic study, it talked about when it's three quarters completed. If it's not, and I'm fully expecting, mostly because of the design of the units, it really is going to be yeah. 55 and over. But that if it, I think it reads if it isn't, yep. then um, you're going to have to do some mitigation. Yep. What, what, what no, happened? that's not my question. What, my question what? is. I think there really should be some money held in escrow for that, as opposed to just letting everybody go their own way. With interest to the applicant that would come to him, you know, setting it up absolutely properly. I don't know how much money, because I have no idea how much mitigation costs. So, but I'm just throwing that out as a suggestion. The, the mitigation, that, the cost, well, and we'll, we'll take a look at it, but what we're looking at for that work is um, if when it's 75 percent built, we'll do a traffic count to see where we're at. Um, if it was less than 75 percent, then uh, the way it's written is that we need to meet with the public works director, the town planner, um, the police chief, um, and what we're going to look at doing is passive uh, traffic calming, uh, such things as additional signage along Eastman Road. A combination of different signs, and and if uh, that doesn't start to deter the traffic, the other thing that we propose is a couple of raised speed tables. Which, you know, I'm I'm going to venture to say that, you know, the the the, the town public works and maybe even fire or police may have mixed feelings about speed tables because. <laughs> no, they're not. Okay, they don't. They're negative. Uh, you know, I mean, speed tables are. You know, you got to plow up over them. I mean, it's it's. You know, it does slow the traffic down. Probably the best, the the best traffic coming on Eastman Road is Eastman Road itself. It's got a lot of trees and character around it. It's got a lot of turns. It's got some vertical curves in it. And I think Maureen's even talked about this. Because of all that, people can't see that, you know, if you got that long straight road that you can see forever and it's nice and wide and you feel comfortable on it, you drive faster. Mm -hmm. You know, if That's you true. can't see as well, then you have a tendency to drive a little bit slower. Now, of course, you know, we've had, there's going to be people that, I can't help some of the drivers, there's going to be people, no matter what the road looks like, are going to drive fast, but... Um, just you know, don't pave it. Just it don't pave it. Pavement. That's what the islands do. <laughs> they just don't pave the roads, but... Um, you know, the agreement was to look at, so those sort of measures are relatively uh, inexpensive, so we can, you know, look at a budget for that and, and figure something out, I assume, Joel. Or even by faith, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, one option, Joel's right, because uh, one option is that before we could tie it to building permits, too, in the sec because the first phase, that's 75% of the total, we need to think through this. Oh, so that would be 10 years. It would be up to Well, what, what happened... Isn't, it, isn't that what the documents say? Or did I misinterpret that? He hopes it's a lot sooner than that. <laughs> well, I hope it is too. <laughs> um, the first phase is, I don't know, it's probably 30% of the buildings, 20 units, mm -hmm. and it's 45. So it's maybe 45% of the units. So it wouldn't be until... The, probably the third phase that he would get to the 75%. So maybe another way we could do that is tie tie it to the building permits, you know, when he reaches that 75%. Okay. Well, level. just creatively think about how, you know, ways yeah. so that there's an insurance that somebody is really going to look at that and we're not just make mouthing that we're... Because I assume if he never got butters. to the 75 percent, let's say he stopped at 70 percent of all the units, then you would never need to do the traffic study, right? Right. So uh, maybe that's a better way to do it, and then he's looking at some... Okay, well, just think yeah. about it and talk, Thank you. talk to Maureen about that. I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything? The other thing, only other thing I wanted to mention, I really appreciate your saying tonight that you're assuming that when you get your completeness review, there will be a public hearing. Some of the comments that we've gotten indicate some concern by members of the public that somehow we might use our discretion not to have another public hearing. I appreciate your assumption that there will be one. I think that's our expectation too, and I just think we 
we can assure the people who are sending us comments that they will have another opportunity to give us their views once we do reach the stage of completeness. I didn't really think that was optional. <laughs> it actually is discretionary on our part as to whether or not we decide to have a public hearing, and apparently there's some concern that we wouldn't. In any event, I think that's everyone's intention here. So I think that's a very good comment. Anybody have anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Um, have a good evening. Anybody have anything else or we move to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Okay. Hey, we're. Hold on. How's Scott doing? Hey. Good. Hi, Nate, 30. All right. I haven't seen yeah. Mark lately. I don't know. Uh, uh, you got to see you I'm done. It's part of my lawyer training makes my, me Because my, my uh, daughter switched last year to uh, lacrosse, and not lacrosse, to cross country. She runs and she got out. I think that's the key. I think if we go ahead, just as handing her an issue. So, and then our youngest is seven. She's not at that level. Yeah. So, don't do what I did. I, I was supposed to do right. the master. <laughs> no, that was the plan. Well, I gathered from some of your comments. Yeah. Right, I didn't know I did. Well, we mutually agreed, yes. We, I, wanted, I wanted to have, we always talked about a quarter one. I said if we're going to have a quarter one, I want to have a quarter one. And four minutes change. I was 39. So I get more grants of claims. But you know what? I got it. Like, it's worth it. A lot of fun. Yeah. And one of the recommendations is very interesting to see. Because it's very